Good afternoon, everyone. Let me begin by saying all protocol observed and also by thanking my alma mater, Da Vinci Institute, for extending me this privilege to speak to you today, a very auspicious day. First and foremost, I want to congratulate you on an amazing achievement. At the best of times, studying and writing exams are extremely trying, but to accomplish these during a period that is unprecedented for our generation, for me, is akin to scaling Mount Everest. So I dock my cap to you. In thinking about the topic to broach today, I dwelled on these difficult times and realized that challenging times have become the norm the world over. COVID-19, it almost feels like it's trying to hold up a mirror to the universe and ask us to take stock. Of course, the world has been at odds with itself and its people for aeons. But I think the consistent eroding of soul to a point where everything and everyone is only valued in terms of monetization has reached a zenith. And I believe that COVID-19 should be seen as our tipping point. What has become a norm and more overt these days is that power has become something to aspire to and be regaled. Power, defined in terms of material wealth, that is, has become the holy grail. And this power is at the expense of the majority of people in the world, and primarily at the expense of marginalized and vulnerable people. If we extend this further, it has become about the individual over the collective. And unfortunately, due to globalization, we see these values operating at a global level, at a continental level, and at a country level. We need only look at the US, the UK, Brazil, India, China. The policies, trade agreements, treaties, legislation, tax laws are all in service of these wealthier countries at the expense of the poorer. But also, they operate at an intra-country level where they aid the rich to get richer. A very obvious case in point is Jeff Bezos, the CEO and founder of Amazon, who is apparently worth approximately $200 billion. He has amassed this wealth at the expense of his employees and society generally. It is widely reported about the paltry working conditions that he imposes on his employees, the high likelihood of losing your job should you challenge these, and the pittance that he pays his employees. His behavior towards his employees' safety during the COVID-19 pandemic was so appalling that even Amnesty International issued a public statement rebuking him and asking him to review these policies. And the tax laws of the Trump administration has enabled him to amass further wealth during the lockdown at the expense of most Americans. This is a classic case of wealth and individualism being revered at the expense of a better humane society. Unfortunately, this value system has crossed the poorest borders brought on by globalization. The value system of Africa, of Ubuntu and the collective care for society, nature, has now been sacrificed at the altar of financial wealth. If we look at certain African governments, once in power, amassing wealth becomes a primary objective. We also see that this wealth is concentrated in the hands of a select few. Unfortunately, these are the people that are revered and held up as models of success with no cognizance of how this was achieved and what or whom was sacrificed to acquire such wealth. I have worked across many African countries and I've borne witness to this firsthand. One such case was in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Outside of the fact that they have probably the most beautiful people in the world, um, they also have one of the most luxurious hotels in Africa, the Sheraton, that I've ever stayed at. But unfortunately, the luxury stops at the boundaries of the hotel. When you gaze out the windows of those hotels, what greets you is the expanse of poverty 
in the form of informal settlements as far as the eye can see. But this is not just about Addis or Ethiopia. This is a norm in most African countries, these so-called dual economies. This is also very much the case in South Africa, which is one of the largest Gini coefficients of the, in the world at 6.5. South Africa has also become a country where profit at all cost is what is rated as success. Where if you are smart at gaming the system, you become financially richer, hence gain more power, the view it as successful. And this is across both the public and private sector. We need to look no further than what is unfolding at the Zondo Commission currently. The cases have been brought by the MPA. Steinoff, Bissasa, VBS sagas, and due to globalization and the global marketplace, international companies such as SAP and McKinsey, and they're operating in practices in South Africa, affect these companies internationally as well. So why, you may ask, why this topic? Why today? Why this event? The sector, the industry you have chosen has for aeons been put on a pedestal, seen as torchbearers for good governance the stalwarts of holding both public and private sectors accountable to all their stakeholders. It's the sector that gave us the triple bottom line, but the sector has now also fallen foul to the new norm, power and financial wealth above all else. So your sector has had a lot of its shine dropped off it and now is a dark cloud cast over it. So what I'm saying is you've chosen a sector that is in dire need of writing itself, in dire need for self-reflection in order for you to regain that role of bearer of good governance. And how do we do this? How do we write the ship? It starts with self. It starts with the internal dialogue, nothing. No countries, communities, sectors, companies, none will change unless we as human beings change until we hold ourselves to our highest standard until we hold ourselves accountable. And how do we do this? We all have a space for good and evil within us. How do we choose when those lines have become so blurred where, where evil is so justifiable these days? How do we choose when those lines are as porous as those global borders? As philosopher Albert Camus said in the 1940s, we need to find a reason to oppose. We need to ask ourselves, what do we want to leave behind? What do we want the next generation to remember us for? A country that beat apartheid but lost to corruption? Or a generation of true activists who chose society, its people, and the environment over profit every time? We need to rediscover our humanity. It's our role. We need to save ourselves from ourselves. This, I know, is an arduous journey, just like the one you've just faced and surmounted, which shows you have the tenacity and the true power to impact the world positively, to craft a path to a humane society. I wish you well on this difficult, arduous journey. But I know that none of us is alone in this journey. It will take a collective effort to regain the soul of the world. To close, I would like to quote one of my favorite philosophers and revolutionaries from Cobb Verde, Amalcar Cabral. I think this is relevant for all of us, but especially the new BCom graduates. He says, hide nothing from the masses of our people tell no lies, expose lives whenever they are told, mask no difficulties, mistakes, failures, claim no easy victories. I wish you well, and I congratulate you once more.